discussion. So, so um, we, uh, Commissioner Smith had an item she wanted uh, for discussion, uh, which was 15.5. She wanted to bring that up. And I also wanted to have uh, uh, the mayor's discussion brought up. And so I had it brought up because I really don't want to wait till the end. Uh, usually um, it's on the tail end of the meeting and, and sometimes we can't get uh, work accomplished or get participation from the public. Um, every time we have an election, I always ask this question uh, uh, to my fellow colleagues because you know, obviously out of courtesy, I, I want to make sure that we're all uh, in agreement with uh, the, the uh, charter officers and the, the management and, and, and legal and every department that we have and make sure that everybody is happy or not. And so, you know, I have some reservations and um, I, I'd like to bring them up uh, during uh, this, this time that I have as a mayor's discussion. Um, I have some things that I wanna talk and, and bring up and speak about uh, with management. And I wanna do it as respectfully and as eloquent as possible. And I also have some with our legal department. So I, if I'm feeling this way, I'd like to see what some of my other fellow colleagues feel and if any action or uh, any uh, comments uh, or actions want to be taken out of this discussion item. So I'm opening up to see what my fellow colleagues have to say uh, at this time and if there is anything to say and we can move forward from here. Anybody wishing to speak, Commissioner Smith? I, you know, I'll make some comments, um, and I'll make them with a great sense of honor to the people that serve in our city and the people that live in our city. Uh, I, I'm used to a different way of government. It doesn't make me right and somebody else wrong. It doesn't make them right and me wrong. But I will tell you, knocking on doors for three months and meeting the public if the public had a say-so, the public would see, sit here right now and say, we need a change. So, you know, there's lots of things I personally felt, as most of you know, and people always said something about something minor that's insignificant. And I'm talking about when you run for a campaign, the signs. It's not earth shattering. It doesn't harm your residents. It doesn't take away from your businesses. But what it does say is a lot about character. It says a lot about character. So I would like to say, the comment I'd like to make is having read the charter, it clearly states that the charter officers have to follow the ordinances and the resolutions and make sure they're implemented in your city. So disappointment is an easy word, but for me, it was very difficult to go through three months to have charter officers not follow the charter. That was a very difficult thing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Smith. Any other commissioners wishing to speak at this time? Commissioner Flermont? Um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll reserve my comments uh, for when we have our uh, workshop. Thank you. OK, so uh, anybody else wishing to speak on the item? of uh, city attorney at this time. Once again, I speak on the city attorney and I apologize because I know our city attorney for many years, I had every intention of being with you today and sitting down with you because unfortunately- There's no sound. There's no sound? I 
got a text from someone saying there's no sound. Well, let me just say this. Um, I too was on the bright line today. I was invited and as we were as commissioners, but what was very interesting at the bright line was somebody gave a speech that was very clear as one person, what do you get done? But as a group, look what can be done. And for me, and you and I had the conversation, it's not a surprise, how could you sit on a commission and the attorney say that you have to vote, majority has to agree that you can pull an item from the agenda? I listen to that. See, what you don't understand is the agenda is what you're going to vote on in a clump number of issues with one vote, either yay or nay. This city doesn't have a workshop anymore so that the commissioners, and with all respect, like Aventura, which they have a meeting twice a month, but one of their meetings is to go over that agenda and have everybody that is a head of a department be in that meeting, answer all the commissioner's questions. It is published. It is a meeting open to the public. But the thing about that meeting is when you go to the committee, when you go to the commission meeting where you're voting yay or nay, you've reviewed it. But when you have no workshop amongst each other, and you're voting on 15 things on the consent agenda, you have no idea what Commissioner Jean thought. Did she hear something that I didn't know? Did she say something that would make me have another question? So, you so when you get to the consent agenda, you pull it and you have a discussion because maybe you're not clear on something. Maybe you need more information before you vote. Or let's put it a different way. There's 15 things on the consent agenda. You want to vote no for one, so you have to vote no for all 15, or you have to pull it, vote yes for 14, and discuss the one you're voting no on. So I said, sat there and couldn't believe it. I was in my house, and we're voting on whether somebody that's a commissioner has the right to find out more information before they vote based on the majority. So I, we've had this conversation because I don't want to sit on a commission where I am representing the public and I don't understand something I'm voting for and don't have the right to bring it out and bring more information. So for me, that was a very weak link in our system. And I just wanted to bring that up because, as you know, it bothered me then, it bothers me now, and we have to be a transparent government that none of you have to go home and say, where is the money? None of you have to do that. Because you pay, turn to page 34 and you see where that 32,000 went. You turn to page 58 and you see where that $10,000 went. You don't see that it was moved and moved and hidden. So that's why this is important to me, and that's why that's the one thing, and I wanted to come and tell you I was going to say that tonight because it still bothers me. A consent agenda for the seven of us has the right to make sure we understand it or we have to vote no for the entire thing. Thank you very much. Commissioner Jean and then Commissioner Chernoff. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. I mean, before the recess ended, I, you asked me if I was okay and I told you I wasn't, and I'm not really feeling well. Um, but to um, Commissioner Smith's point, um, allowing the opportunity to have a workshop, not in, in this case, I didn't know that there was gonna be an item for, for um, due to Mayor's discussion for to discuss legal, but obviously, I'm not sure if there were conversations before or not, but seemingly what I wanted to say is, in the same breath that you mentioned me and, and that you said that it's, it's fair practice to dialogue through these issues, 
and also more so than anything to give people fair notice. Um, I just, that line of, of statements doesn't align with this moment. Um, but nevertheless, uh, the mayor has the opportunity to move his item forward so that we can discuss it. Um, but again, you mentioned to speak about the charter officers and then you say the item on legal. So I'm not really sure <laughs> where it's coming from. So to clarify that, I just right. want to say, you know, I, I brought up the items of the charter officers, uh, both the legal and the city manager, so that we can review and go over the, the, the likes and no likes and how we feel at this moment about those, those charter officers. And if in fact we, we do want to still keep them on or if there's um, some uh, vision to, to have a change. Okay. With that being said, I'm not comfortable having this discussion now. Um, and like I said, I'm not feeling well, so I'm going to be leaving the meeting. Okay. Feel better. Thank you. So, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner Chernoff. Thank you <clears throat> for the opportunity. I, too, was very disappointed during the campaigning process of how the city reacted, both the legal department and the management department. And I am sorry to say, but I, you know, they've welcomed me here, and I appreciate that. But I think it's time to part with them. OK. Any other statement from any other commissioner? Commissioner Spector? So are we, are we talking? Did you say we're talking about the attorney? We're talking about the attorney at this point, yes. Oh. All right. Um, <clears throat> so I've had the opportunity to, um, when, I, when I was going door to door, um, you know, meeting um, so many people, and, you know, the concerns were um, the garbage, the water and um, the fourth floor. And um, I, I mean, they don't know it as the fourth floor. They don't know what particular floors um, everybody's at, but I'm just saying, I'm saying the fourth floor. So um, I'm not really happy with the attorney. I, I'm not happy about how it, it all came about in the first place. You know, it wasn't even, um, um, you know, I, I don't like how it was done in the first place, so I was never happy with that. And, um, you know, I guess it's time for change. Okay. Um, you know, I... Uh, yeah. Commissioner Fleurman, if you, uh, if you want to go ahead and speak, I just have two things I want to say, and I want to be very, very brief, so. Okay. Go ahead, sir. So, um, thank you. Uh, I just want to clarify, first of all, that, um, you know, my understanding, and that's the reason why I did come back, is that the legitimacy of, or the legitimacy or, um, ability for one to serve or not serve based on residency does not affect the legitimacy of the meeting itself. That was the understanding that I gathered once I left the dais, and that's the reason why I came back on the dais. So I wanted to clarify that. Um, number two, we just sat here and agreed that we would have a workshop with the city attorney, the city clerk, and the city manager. That's what we just agreed on. Um, in addition to that, we talk about processes that happened in the past. However, what I'm seeing before me now is the same process being implemented again um, to a degree that is what I'm seeing. Now, in addition to that, um, whether you uh, I'm going to start off with the city manager. Whether you like the city manager personally or not personally, what I will say is that if you look at items that have been done over the past year and a half to move the city forward, he has done the job. 
if you, there's been no election, no election that I can recall where there has not been disappointment, where there has not been issues of concern relating to trash, relating to water, and relating to the things that we have heard here this evening. In 2018, it was about bringing back our water plant. It was about going from quarterly, I'm going from monthly billing to quarterly billing. It was about bringing the sanitation back in house. In 2020, some of those same issues with the exception of water, because we insourced water, that was a win. Commissioner Smith was on the dais to make sure and help that that happened. And we were successful in bringing it back. Saved $6.5 million the first year, okay? We then had an issue with sanitation where waste management was staying past their initial contract and charging us a premium. This commission, with the exception of, I believe, Commissioner Turnoff, and I don't think Commissioner Smith was on at that time, voted not to approve the contract with WastePro. And I say this commission because whether it was all of us or some of us, it did not go through. As a result of that, we continued with waste management and continued to pay a higher fee. This manager comes in and negotiates to actually have a contract bought before us, and we voted on a contract. Now, the transition has not been simple, and the transition has not been easy, but it's been, I believe, less than six months since we've transitioned to Coastal, and they're working to try to get things where they need to be. As it relates to um, personality differences and things of that sort, perhaps some of those issues do exist. Um, when we go to our city attorney, I will say that the city attorney has worked to make sure that not only he does the job that he's asked to do, but is innovative in bringing in revenue through his department. We talk about community benefits. When people come up here now, that, th that this has never happened before, where they're actually contributing monies towards education and towards other things that our residents need, all because of what the city attorney is doing. We're talking about traffic, speed bumps. A lot of you recall that getting a speed bump to be installed in the city of North Miami Beach, years. As a matter of fact, 13th Avenue, where people were asking for traffic calming, we couldn't get speed bumps to the point where our former city manager had to put speed tables that didn't do a darn thing to slow down the traffic, right? This team comes in and negotiates with Miami-Dade County a memorandum of understanding so that we can streamline the speed bump process and streamline traffic calming. So that now if a resident has an issue similar to those in Ulita, they now have a speed bump on 2nd Avenue north of 164th Street. And there's more to come. These are some of the things that this team has been doing. It's been a rough road. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that it's been pretty. It hasn't been easy. But when I look at a CRA that was dormant, that now has a director that's working hard, when I look at things that are happening with traffic calming, when I look at revenues that are coming in as a result of our team working to make sure that developers respect North Miami Beach when they come to the table, to me, we're advancing in the right place. When I look at our city clerk's office, same, same thing. There were ancient ways of keeping records that we're no longer doing that anymore. We're moving into a more technologically advanced city clerk office. We understand politics. And I'll be the first to tell you that, listen, I get it. New people come, sometimes they want their own people in here that they feel they can work better with or they can get whatever it is that they're looking to do, they can advance their mission. However, I will tell you that pound for pound, these charter officers have been working their dawners to make sure that the city of North Miami Beach shines. And my thought was that we were going to go into a workshop, see what the yays and the nays are, see what the pros and the cons are, and give these people an opportunity to prove themselves to the new commission. That was my thought. 
even the last time with what happened as it relates to the city attorney and the city manager, the city manager didn't leave until March, April of the following year. Didn't happen the first night. The city attorney didn't leave until the following year. It didn't happen the first night. But time and time again, I understand this may be your process. You tried to pull it with Esmond Scott when he was here before. You tried to pull it with Sarah, our former city attorney. Okay, and we fought hard that time in 2018 to make sure that Esmond Scott stayed, and we fought hard to keep Sarah as well. I don't think that this is the right process. I don't think it's good for continuity. I don't think it's good for consistency. I think we give these people an opportunity at least to hold a, co a commission uh, retreat and workshop and see where it takes us. And at that point, if we decide that we don't want to move forward with them, we give them an opportunity to properly transition with people that we have an opportunity to vet and to follow a process that so many people have been asking for over the past couple of years. But don't make the mistake of getting rid of these people tonight. I don't think it makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to go ahead and put on the record and as I said, I'm just going to be as professional as possible because not, not only is Mr. Atanat our current city attorney, but he's also a personal friend of mine for many years. So I, I have the utmost respect and uh, I'm not gonna sit here and rake anybody over the coals, but say that there is a sentiment up here of wanting some change. And from what I'm hearing and um, you know, I, I also have had my, my, my moments and I did with you and we've, we've sat down and we've hashed that out afterwards. But, um, you know, look, you, you, like one of my fellow commissioners said, you know, with the tide comes change. And every time, you know, there's, you get a fresh new commissioner, you, 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 get, you get fresh minds and people want to see things and want to see new people. and and uh, want to see a change in their government. And I believe that's a sentiment I'm hearing so far up here. So without belaboring this process, Mr. Or going, Mayor, may I going, speak oh, again? excuse me, excuse me, sorry. Without belaboring the process and going um, through the mud, I, I want to give Mr. Atanat the utmost respect and, and say at this time that um, we, we are asking for your resignation. I'm asking for it here. On the dais, and I don't know if there's a second uh, that feels the way I do, so that we can continue moving this forward. So um, th there's a first and a second to to entertain uh, the uh, termination of, of the city attorney at this time. Um, uh, is there any comment? I have, I have a comment. As I said Second earlier, okay, go ahead. as I said earlier, um, whether you have personality differences, you can go through the records and you can see how this city is moving forward in so many ways. Separately from that, I will say that I don't think this is a forum to discuss a resignation. I believe that if Mr. Atanat or any charter officer should resign we should offer the opportunity for them to be able to have a discussion separately and then bring something forth to the commission that the commission could then fully vet and talk about transition processes. For someone to walk out the day of and for a city attorney department to be just left without an attorney, that doesn't make sense. That's never been how we do business here. That's never been. You can say we didn't have a particular process to hire an attorney, but as it relates to transition, we taught, we always have a proper transition. And so, you know, I, I say give them the opportunity to properly, um, if that's what the commission should decide, to accept a proper uh, uh, um a proper transition from the attorney. I don't know where the attorney stands. I can't speak for him. Honestly, um, that's that's up to him to speak for himself, but I don't think the way we're doing this tonight is the appropriate way. Okay, can okay. I call the that, question? And I'm not gonna stand for it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, call the question, you Madam you Clerk. Can't, you, can't. I, you can't break the quorum. I called the question. 
You can't break the quorum. He just did. He just did. He can't. He can do what he wants. He's a grown man. Uh, Madam Clerk, let's get the vote. I'm sorry. You're right. We need five. I'm sorry. I okay. Thought I had so five. you know what? To the developers that were on um, the quasi judicial, um, it's not our fault. Um, to the residents that came here, it's not our fault. And if the ethics commission is watching, um, you just saw two of your commissioners, two of the commissioners leave. I hope you're watching and do something about it. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a suggestion that we have a, an emergency meeting. Uh, although it takes five people to do that or the manager, I think we need an emergency meeting. We, we need five people for an emergency meeting. Um, I will um, respectfully ask, um, since we've lost the quorum, uh, at the next meeting that there is legislation crafted um, that will prevent anybody from walking off the dais. I believe Commissioner Kramer brought it up once and it was voted down. Um, if nobody can find it, um, I'll, I'll have to do a public records request through the clerk. But I, I want to find the resolution Commissioner Kramer brought up once um, that would not allow a person to walk off the dais and break the quorum. And just for the, the record, meeting. that there was never a majority vote to fire Esmond Scott. There wasn't even a motion that was seconded. Uh, I don't know, uh, city clerk, if I'm on record or off record because we don't have a quorum. But for public information, and because it meant so much to me, and with respect of somebody that I know for a long time, there have been some things that happened that hurt our city from the counsel that we were given in North Miami Beach. I am not going to mention any of the above. My confidence for what I feel this city needs to go forward is based on something different. But I did read the charter and I did read the city attorney's contract. City attorney's contract is a firm. And when I heard my fellow commissioners say, give them the opportunity to resign, the firm could quit any time, that's for sure. This is, a, this is a firm that works for us. We, as a sitting body, the majority of us have an opportunity, and it's nothing personal. As people have told me that know you well, what a wonderful family man you are, and what a great person you are. But I will tell you the truth, Mr. Ott, if you knocked on the doors that I did, out of 400 doors, 350 want to change. So there's a lot that plays into this conversation. I have no idea what anybody else in this day has felt. I don't play that game. When somebody called me, I did, said, you are not going to work as a conduit. That's not the way I do government work. But I would think, knocking on doors, that three out of the four commissioners heard the same thing I heard. And prior to being elected, sometimes Commissioner Chernoff and I walked together. Sometimes Commissioner Smuckler and I walked together. But this is not a personal issue to me. This is a government-run city that needs some correction. And I'm saying some to be kind, instead of saying a lot. So I'm trying to be kind to say that I don't think it would work because as our legal counsel in that election that was so blatantly obvious what was happening with our government involved and without somebody stepping in, it makes me nervous because then your question to yourself is, 
What else? What else? So I don't know if this is on record or off record. I have no idea because there's no quorum. But I want to say this is nothing vindictive. This is nothing mean-spirited in my seat. The only thing I want to do is bring the best government to North Miami Beach we can possibly have. And with what has happened in some of the decisions that were made in my seat, I didn't think that that was what would go forward. I can't speak for anybody else, but I do speak for what I've uncovered. And someday, maybe we'll share it and see if I'm wrong. But I, I really do appreciate you understanding that this is not, if you will, that this is nothing against you. It's the firm and the way the firm took care of our city that makes me a little anxious to make sure that it doesn't continue. And that's the reason that I feel the way I feel. All right, folks, we're, we're gonna go ahead and conclude this meeting. Obviously, we can't continue any further. So we don't have a quorum, meeting adjourned. And uh, happy holidays to everyone, be safe. God bless you all. <laughs>